Well, my next guest is an Iranian-born actress and activist who tweeted that she stands with, quote, all dissidents demanding an end to the occupying brutal theocracy in Iran. Hashtag no to Islamic Republic. Nazanin Boniadi uh, joins me on Skype from um, Los Angeles. Um, and <clears throat> I want to talk to you today, given that we've seen the inauguration of a new hardline uh, president just yesterday. We are seeing Iran being blamed for a number of attacks on tankers uh, in the Arabian Sea. We've also got the um, Iran-backed militant group Hezbollah trading fire with Israel at present. So there's a wider kind of regional story going on here, which has Iran sort of squarely, uh, you know, at its centre, uh, if you will. You, you just, just described Iran for us in that tweet. Is that how you see your country, an occupying and brutal theocracy? I think it doesn't take me to um, say those words. I'm merely echoing what the people of Iran are saying, very bravely taking to the streets, risking their lives. Um, the slogans in these protests since 2019 have been unprecedented. They've been uniformly aimed at their own government, their own regime, despite outside uh, pressures um, and despite 42 years of uh, the Islamic Republic having, uh, Republic having a monopoly on the information uh, fed to the Iranian public um, with state-sponsored media, the Iranian public simply know that the greatest impediment between them and a better future is their own government. Yesterday, we saw a new era take hold in Iran. The hardliner president, Ibrahim Raisi, was officially inaugurated into office. What do you believe his presidency will mean for Iran, both domestically, which is incredibly important? We often talk about Iran on the international stage, but we must be clear uh, that, you know, it's important to talk about what's going on domestically and, of course, on the international front. Your thoughts? Very much so. Um, Ebrahim Raisi has been a pillar of the Islamic Republic for 42 years, uh, first as a prosecutor, then head of the judiciary, and now president, and his track record speaks for itself. He is a gross human rights violator. He, um, his, he's implicated for crimes against humanity, in particular the 1988 massacre of over 5,000 dissidents, um, for which Amnesty International has uh, clearly mm. stated that it should be investigated. So it doesn't bode well for the people of Iran or na Iran's neighbors or the international community that he is president. He is likely to empower the IRGC the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, an arm of the Iran, Iranian army, uh, armed forces, tasked with protecting the constitution of the Islamic Republic. Notably, it doesn't have the word Iran in its name because it's mm. not tasked with protecting the Iranian people or the nation. You are Iranian, but you live in the United States, of course, and you have said that the US is focused on the Iran or the nuclear deal, but not as focused on what the people of Iran are saying, what do you mean by that? And what can the US, under this current Biden administration, which says it puts human rights uh, front and center um, on its foreign file, what can the US do better um, with regard Iran, in your opinion? I think rhetoric matters. So when uh, then Senator Joe Biden in 1986 spoke to uh, the Senate uh, in a hearing and said, uh, condemned the Reagan administration for not being hard enough on the South African uh, apartheid regime, said unequivocally that the United States must stand with the people of South Africa. That is the type of rhetoric that Iranian people mm. deserve. Um, we shouldn't prioritize any kind of negotiation or deal over human rights. Um, those two things uh, don't have nothing to do with each other. We must, uh, uh, you know, absolutely have uh, morals when it comes to this. And, um, you know, he also recently, as president, stood by Cuban dissidents. So Iranian, the Iranians deserve, deserve the same. Iranian people are, are risking everything to st stand for a better future. Um, 
And as far as what can we do, we have to be pro proactive and not reactive. And what I mean by that is um, the diaspora, Iranian diaspora, has been very active in ensuring that communication is open um, with the Iranian dissidents and, and, and Iranian civil society and the world. Um, an example of that is uh, Mehdi Yahyanajad's Touche app, which has ensured that despite the fact that only 20% of Iranians have access to the internet in 2013, those are the statistics, and 70% have access to satellite dishes, which are illegal in Iran. He's created an app called Touche, which allows uh, Iranians to have access uh, during internet shutdowns, have access to uh, information which is censored inside Iran. Mm. That allows them to have hope and continue their uh, their movement, know that they're not alone, and have access to accurate information. Um, so those are the things that we can do. We need to ensure that internet crackdowns and shutdowns don't happen so that people can organise and civil society is empowered inside Iran. And Iranians, of course, fearing that a new bill, new legislation will indeed uh, further restrict uh, the internet um, in Iran. Um, so you are making the point that that is something that Washington uh, needs to be um, vocal about. As as you rightly point out, they have been uh, with regard internet access in Cuba and support for Cuban uh, dissidents. You are making uh, you know a, 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 a perfectly sensible analogy there. The the state of play in Iran domestically look, let's be quite clear, is not optimistic. The economy is in dire straits. We've seen deadly street protests as of late due to water shortages, which were uh, met with brutal crackdowns by the authorities. And um, I, I know you speak to people um, in Iran uh, regularly. So do we. What do you think um, can be done realistically um, to bring about some positive change for Iranians on the ground? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? I think mm. uh, exactly what I, I just alluded to is being proactive and not reactive is very important. So we have to have strategic plans in place that uh, when internet shutdowns happen, when 360 protesters are detained as they just uh, were in Khuzestan during the protests, um, which quickly became anti-government protests. It's important to note that, yes, they started as um, protests against the lack of electricity and water shortages, but they quickly became slogans. Uh, the slogans include death to Islamic Republic, death to the supreme leader. These are unprecedented. Um, and so we need to make sure that the, the internet crackdown that happened in the aftermath of that um, and, and stopped the protests in an attempt to crack down on protesters uh, doesn't happen. And it's also important to note that when, when kids as young as 12 are being detained and teenagers are being shot dead, this becomes absolutely urgent. With that, we're going to leave it there. It's uh, been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. And please uh, come back and uh, speak to us again. Thank you. Well, well, you've been reporting.